Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about uh, comparison, material comparisons between iClone 7 and Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to talk about the different textures in iClone 7 and how they correspond with the texture nodes and so on and so forth in Unreal 4. Uh, so what we're dealing with in this tutorial is this uh, Zane, crazy muscular, powerful Zane dude just uh, flexing his biceps for us here. And what we're going to do is we're going to export him into Unreal and try to get all the materials right. Okay, I'm going to talk about, in the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the material comparisons. And in the second part, we're going to talk about how to uh, use the different textures and where to find them and input them into your Unreal project. Okay, just to enhance the visual quality. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the materials we're dealing with in iClone here. So we'll go over here to Material. With our character selected, you want to make sure your body is selected. So you can go up here to your Picker tool and just pick the body. All right. And you can see the texture maps right here, base color. We have a diffuse map right there. We have a normal map in the bump channel, ambient occlusion, metallic roughness, and glow. And we're using the PBR shader type. Now keep in mind that uh, the texture channels, the blend texture channel, and the reflection texture channel are not compatible with Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so you can't use those in Unreal Engine. Uh, the reflection one is found if you change this from PBR to traditional. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look at how to export this character first. So we'll just select the character, pretty easy stuff. We'll go up to File and Export, and Export FBX. Now keep in mind you do have to have the pipeline version of 3D Exchange in order to do this. Okay, so we're gonna choose our target tool preset, in this case, Unreal Engine, and uh, 30 frames per second is what we're uh, looking for right here. And we're not dealing with any animation in this tutorial, so we're just going to choose Current Frame. Okay, everything else seems okay. So we'll just go ahead and export it. And I'm going to create a folder on my desktop called Exports, since we're going to be doing a couple of these. Okay, let's keep things a bit organized here. And we'll call this FBX file Zane. Okay, and just go ahead and save that. So what's happening now is we're just exporting the Zane character to FBX file. So what's happening now is we're just exporting the Zane character to FBX format, and then we're going to import it into Unreal momentarily. All right, so once the export is completed, let's go over here to Unreal, and you can see we just have a, an empty scene here. I'm going to create a folder for our uh, Zine character. So I'm just going to go right-click and create a folder for Zine. Now within Zine's folder, I'm going to create a subfolder called Materials, and I'm going to show you why in just a moment here. Just keep the materials organized. Okay, Ooh, Materials, there we go. All right, so in the Zine folder, I'm going to import in that FBX file. So let's go to our desktop here. And you can find under the exports folder here, there is the zane.fbx. Now it also exports a texture folder right here with all the characters' textures. Okay, so under zine, you'll find uh, the, the body here, for example, the skin body, a couple of maps here. And I'll talk about where you can find the other ones in just a moment. But let's go back into, uh, we want to go back into the main folder here. All right, where we can find the zane.fbx. Okay, and just click and drag that zane.fbx into Unreal. All right, right there. There's a couple of important uh, import settings that we need to check here. So we're going to import the skeleton, of course. Uh, import mesh for sure. Uh, now here we want to make sure we choose use T0 as reference pose, okay? So this is basically using frame 0 as a reference pose. If you don't use this, it can't determine the orientation and the weighting of your skeleton, so you're going to have an error when you import in your character. So make sure you have this selected. It's very important, okay? Everything else would be okay. You can import morph targets uh, if you're dealing with, you know, uh, facial morphs and all that stuff. Uh, so normally you'd want to do that as well, including animations. But we're just going to go ahead and quickly import since we're only dealing with textures and materials in this tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and import all. All right, so once that finishes importing, it'll start compiling all your shaders and stuff like that. And uh, the reason I'm going to, I created that materials folder earlier is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save all my materials to that separate folder there. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, just select something here, press Control A to select everything. And I'll just hold Control and click here and click on my uh, rigs that I don't want to export, and, or don't want to move rather, and then just left click and drag into the Materials folder and just go ahead and move them there. In case that's going to move all the materials to that Material folder. Just to keep things a little bit more organized. All right, so uh, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Zane first of all by double clicking on him. Okay, so you can see, whoa, this guy is pretty built. Uh, but let's take a closer look at his materials anyways. Okay, so the materials we're going to worry about right now are the materials on the body. Okay, so skin body material over here. If we just double-click that, we'll go into our uh, 
graph here for our uh, body texture, for our body material rather. Okay, you can see it's pretty basic. We just have the diffuse map uh, uh, pumped into the base color node here and the specular uh, map over here. This is the roughness map uh, piped into the specular and our normal map piped into the normal. We'll talk about how to optimize these and add the other uh, materials, add their texture channels rather, in the next tutorial. But in this one, we're only going to be dealing with the minor differences that you'll find in the materials between iClone and Unreal. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to close this one. Uh, we don't need to worry about that. I'll go ahead and close this as well. And I'm going to create another folder. And for this folder, we're going to call this one zine, oops, underscore material. Okay. And then maybe comparison. All right. It's a long name, but uh, it'll kind of make sense in just a minute here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, in that folder. What I'm going to do is go back into iClone now. And we're going to take a look at changing a couple things on our character. And we're going to re-export him. So for the base color map, you saw in the Unreal Material graph that it was piped into the base color texture node. Okay. So, but what if we don't have a base color? What if we don't have a diffuse map or anything like that? So what if I go ahead and just delete this? You'll see my character gets all white and everything. I'm just going to take down the glow map so we can kind of see the uh, just the whiteness of our character right there, okay? And uh, in this case, what we probably want to do is uh, select our base color channel over there and go down here to diffuse color. Now, if you adjust this diffuse color, you can pipe this into the base color texture node in your Unreal Material graph. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to a value that kind of looks like a skin color, okay? Just to kind of keep things relatively normal looking. And uh, like 15, okay, so it looks like a kind of a darker colored skin. Okay, it looks fine, okay, in Unreal. Okay, you can see the, looks like a tan line there on the on his back. All right, but we're going to go ahead and export him like this. But we're going to do another thing before that as well. We're going to select his hair. So I'm going to go up here to use my selection tool. And I'm going to select his hair. Okay, you can see the little select faux hawk hair there. And we're going to also go to the hair, the base color map of the hair. And we're going to add some self-illumination, okay? So you can see in iClone, it just kind of, you know, brightens it up a little bit. Okay, we'll go to a value of like 75 maybe or something. Okay, maybe a bit closer, you can see the difference there, okay? Self-illumination. So we're doing this because if you change your self-illumination on any of your texture channels, it will basically make a copy of your base color texture uh, channel. So in this case, it's going to make a copy of this, and it's going to pipe it into the glow map in uh, Unreal otherwise known as the emissive color map, okay? So we'll see that in just a moment. So now that we've made those two changes to our character, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and export it, okay? So we're going to export uh, FBX, same thing, uh, Unreal, current frame, blah, 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 okay? And we're going to export it as a uh, Zane underscore material comparison, okay? A long name, but we'll work with it. Okay, so once we've exported that into iClone, we need to do the same thing and import it once again into Unreal. Okay, let's get that uh, exports folder up again here. And Zane Material Comparison. We'll click and drag him into that folder in Unreal, the respective folder. Okay, all the FBX import options are going to be the same, so let's go ahead and import all. All right, now we don't need to put our materials in the separate folder for this one because we're just going to take a quick look at the Zane model right here. So Zane Material Comparison. Uh, the long long name here, you can see his weird looking uh, tan kind of body color right there, okay? This is uh, his body there, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is take a look at the skin body texture right now, or uh, material rather. And let's just uh, bring it over right here, this node over right here. And right now you can see that the uh, diffuse color that we had in iClone is actually piped into the base color uh, texture channel uh, for the skin body in Unreal. Okay, and the same thing happens with the with the specular and the normal maps there. But let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, base color. So if we double click it, you can see that it's basically the same color as we had in Unreal, or in iClone rather. If we disable our sRGB uh, to toggle gamma corrected SGR, sRGB previewing here, you can see it goes back to the original color here. And of course, you can further adjust the uh, the values here as well. You can see the comparison between old and new, okay, depending on what kind of color you want. We'll just cancel this for now. But keep in mind that you cannot use this diffuse color here from iClone for any other color nodes in, um, in your Unreal Material uh, grab. You can only use it for the base color map. So if you wanted to do any other sort of color modification, you wouldn't be able to use uh, this node right here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a close this down right now. We don't need to save it. 
And let's take a look at the hair. Okay, so the hair will be uh, way down here. Whoops, not that far, I guess. Down here, closer to the bottom, you'll see the faux hawk hair. Let's just double click on that. And with the faux hawk hair, you'll see uh, something a little bit different than the other ones. You'll see the uh, diffuse map, rather, in iClone, or the base color map in iClone, is now piped into the emissive color map, or the emissive color node in your Unreal Material Graph here, okay? So basically, anytime you add any self-illumination to your uh, base color uh, texture channel in iClone, it's going to translate into uh, this sort of situation where it's piping into your emissive color node in your uh, Unreal Material Graph. If you have a glow map, it'll be a little bit different. We'll talk about that in the next part of this tutorial. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is a slight difference when it comes to mirroring the UV textures. So you can see on the screen right now, I've adjusted the uh, ground to this uh, arrow kind of pattern. You can see there's black on the top and white on the bottom. And if we uh, go over here to our uh, um, position here, transform position, you can see that if I go up on the uh, y-axis, our y-axis value will increase right there. If I go up on the x-axis, our x-axis value will increase. Now keep in mind that the x-axis is kind of pointing the opposite end of these arrows right now, okay? I'm going to set these back down to zero, just so you can kind of uh, get a demonstration of that. And let's go ahead and export this the way it is to FBX format. So I'm going to go to File and Export and Export FBX. And let's just uh, Unreal Preset, 30 frames per second, current frame rather, okay, looks fine. And we'll call this uh, UV underscore regular, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this FBX into my Unreal project. So let's go over to Unreal here. And uh, I'm just going to make a new folder for it, actually. We'll call it new folder. We'll call it uh, UV underscore regular. Okay. And I'm going to import that into UV regular to FBX. I'm going to import it into that folder in Unreal. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We don't need to import it in the skeleton. Just go import all. Okie dokes. And I'm just going to basically click and drag in my little uh, project or little prop here. And you can see that, uh, okay, so um, we're just going to go over here a little tiny bit. And if we move up, let's actually just zero out all the axes for now, just so we're in the neutral position. Press the, I'll uh, kind of zoom in on the project there, if we can do so. All right. So you can see here that uh, the green axis, if we go up on the green axis there, okay, it's going up on the uh, value over here. And if we go up on the x-axis over here, it's going up on the x-axis over here. So the x-axis, a uh, positive increase in value on the x-axis will be going the opposite direction of the actual arrows on our prop, okay? So let's go back to iClone here, and you can see a positive increase uh, on the x-axis, we'll be going the opposite direction of our arrows on the prop. Okay, so we're basically we're all evened out. But what what happens is if we zero this out, let's actually just uh, undo, undo that and let's take this back down to zero here, uh, since the scale is a little bit off. Uh, what, what happens right here is if we go down to our materials and we go to our UV settings, you can see here the UV settings, uh, the UV is already tiled. I've locked the ratio, you can tile it you know, three times, uh, once or uh, twice or you know whatever let's just keep it at three times right now okay, it's also tiling on the v-axis there as well and what happens is if I mirror this on the horizontal axis what's going to happen is it's going to go like this and then if I go on a positive value on my x-axis it's going the same direction as the arrows on my prop okay let's take that back down to zero and let's import that as a separate prop so we'll go to file and export FBX, and we'll call this, uh, everything looks good. Okay, we'll call this UV underscore mirrored. Okay, mirrored, there we go. And then I'm going to import that into a separate folder in Unreal. So let's go to Unreal and create a folder called uh, UV mirror. UV underscore mirror. Okay, and I'm going to find my file uv underscore mirrored on the desktop there and bring it in okay and again we don't need the skeleton just import all and what i'm going to do is just click and drag it right beside the other one it needs to go down a lot on the uh, z-axis there okay so you can see that we mirrored it we uh, brought it in and it is in fact mirrored 
as compared to the uh, regular texture right there. Okay. So the issue is, if once we've mirrored it, if we go into materials, let's actually take our regular one, UV regular, and let's go into the materials right here. Okay. And if we just take a look at the materials, you can see there's a text uh, texture coordinate uh, node right here. And you can see the texture coordinate node is at 3 and 3 for U and V. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. So no problem there. Okay. We don't need to save that for now. And we found out that, you know, everything on this one is the same as, uh, as same as an icon. However, with our uh, UV mirror, if we open the uh, material in the UV mirror and we go into that, what happens is if we take a look at the texture coordinate for UV mirror, it's negative three. And that's why if we just uh, minimize this for now and go over here, you can see that if we go positive on the X axis, it's going the same direction as the arrows. Okay. And negative is going the negative direction as the arrows. Okay. So it's just one thing to keep in mind. Okay. If you go to the materials there, if you want to adjust that, you can go to our texture coordinates and just change that to a value of three instead. And if we do that, we go ahead and save it or apply it, whatever. We just go ahead and close that down. You can see now it's the same direction and going to a negative value on the X axis. So everything will be the same. All right. So just keep that in mind when you're, uh, if you, if you're bringing in props with mirrored textures and, uh, and you've done any UV tiling because it can get a little bit confusing, but uh, hopefully that cleared it up for you. All right, so uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. Make sure you check, uh, stay tuned for part four of our tutorial where we'll teach you how to optimize the materials and uh, find the texture maps and bring them into Unreal to kind of make the materials look better on your character. And as always, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.